record on this computer. Okay, so um, I know some of you have already been in my class last year, and but most of you are, are new to my class and you've probably heard a lot about numerical methods. Um, I hope this class for some reason has a lot of uh, scary reputation to it. But in my opinion, it is one of the uh, uh, most important classes that you take in this day and age, because it's going to introduce you to some of the tools that are necessary uh, for modern engineering practice. Um, and those essentially involve dealing with computers and data and programming and whatnot. Okay, so in this first lecture, um, my goal is first to make sure that you are in the right class. So this is numerical methods, chemical engineering 2450. Make sure that's the right class, um, not you know another class that you just joined by mistake. Um, if that's the case, my objectives for today are to get to know each other um, uh, throughout the class. Um, it's it's hard for me to teach on a Zoom uh, thing because I don't see you. I, I like to interact with my students. I like them to see my body language. I like them to see me, how I move around the class. I, I like to see my students, to see their body language, to uh, read between the lines, see if they're missing a concept or not. So um, it's a difficult time for all of us. And that's why I wanna have a short discussion on how COVID-19 and the shutdown has impacted you um, individually, your families, um, and my family as well. Then we'll go over the syllabus, some of the administrative stuff, um, an overview of numerical methods, um, and then we'll break into another discussion of uh, um, on effective online learning, what you find uh, more effect, most effective to you, and if we can implement this in class or not. Okay, so, um, and then we had to programming with Python, etc. So I already introduced myself. My name is Tony Saad. You can call me Dr. Saad, Dr. Tony, Professor Saad, Professor Tony, um, uh, whichever in, in all of your communications, please. Um, and uh, with that, I would like to take a moment for um, all of you to uh, consider the following. Um, so I want you to uh, just, you know, take a second and think about two things that grab maybe your notes um, or a pen and paper. And I want you to list one or two things that impacted you negatively during the shutdown, things that made you upset, made you angry, made you frustrated, could be you know, all things like not seeing your friends, for example, or just being annoyed by having to wear, you know, all the accessories before you, you, you had uh, on to the store or something. Um, but I also want you to think about two things that impacted you positively. I know many people, uh, like I built a fire pit in my backyard and my, my, my son loves that. We go and roast marshmallows and then there's a lot of smoke. So we have to rush and, and um, put sand on top of it. So, so you know, I, I'm sure there were some positive things that happened during um, the shutdown. I want you to also list one or two perspectives that changed in your life about the world, about life, about family. Um, because of the shutdown and any other thoughts that you'd like to share. So I'll give you uh, a minute to think about that. Um, and then feel free to either share your thoughts in the chat. Um, so I'm gonna open up the chat window. Um, I'm gonna open up the chat window and yeah, feel free to share with the chat or raise your hand and um, take on the mic because in a traditional classroom, I will get to know you personally. I will know your names. Um, it's easier for you to remember my name because I'm just one person you're remembering. Um, I have about 67 students and I will try to remember all your names and um, um, uh, associate your name with, with um, your, your, your camera. So it would be nice if you have, if you wanna turn on your camera so that I can always um, um, see, um, uh, see who you are. Um, so we're starting to see, I, I wanna start with my negatives actually. So I had a baby in April. That was like the first few weeks of the shutdown. There was chaos, nobody knew what was going on. The hospitals were shut down. There was like one person in the hospital. We came in like, we're having a baby and my wife uh, might need oxygen because with the first 
kid we had, she needed oxygen. They were like, no oxygen allowed because of putting things on your face and whatnot. And anyway, it was very stressful. The staff was was short. They, you know, and and keeps thinking things in the back of your mind. What if they, you know, um, skipped on something? They ended up discharging us with if they missed a few tasks they had to do. Like they have to if you have if you have if you happen to have a baby, you know, there's this jaundice thing that happens with kids. So they discharged us, discharged us with high bilirubin. And so we had to come back to the emergency room and it was very stressful. That So that annoyed me a lot. And then subsequently, any medical appointments um, with the kids, you know, they keep falling and they keep, you know, doing things. If you have a toddler, um, you know, life with a toddler. And so it was very difficult to get medical appointments. So that bothered me a lot. Um, I could not see my family. That was extremely, uh, my family is abroad. And so typically over Christmas we go and, and, or Easter, we go and see each other. Um, and uh, I have family in Canada and, and we all get together and um, none of that happened. Um, on the positive side, I got to spend a lot more time with with my kids, um, and and that was great. Um, I got an electric bike, um, uh, so that that was fun. I, I kind of anticipated there was going to be a shutdown, so I ordered the bike um, quite ahead of time. And um, one positive thing, specifically for me, is I don't like to particularly travel and be away from um, uh, my wife and kids, and um, because we're we don't have any family here, and so um, we, we we try to limit our conference travel to one day essentially but over zoom everything is great i was like doing conferences pretty much every week you just hop on zoom do your do your talk meet some people and so that was great positive um some of the perspectives that changed in my life is i i realized how fragile the world can be and that you cannot rely on the the world to help you so i'm thinking now of a you know, building my life so that we have less dependence on external factors, trying to be self-sufficient um, as much as possible. Like, you know, like we have like 15 bags of flour now and we're like baking all the time and um, we have a lot of salt and butter and, you know, things like little things like that, small changes in your life um, that try, that make you um, a little bit, um, um, uh, essentially is strong in, in, in the face of crazy things like that. So I grew up in a civil war, so I know what war looks like. And this was interestingly, um, um, in many ways, it was it was more um, more and uh, more uh, uh, stressful than a war. Um, in the middle of a war zone, you if you leave the area where the war is happening, you're safe. Right, you're 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 physically safe. You're you can you just travel, you know, to a different um, zip code essentially, and you're okay. But with this, everyone could be carrying, you know, the the virus, and you if you happen to have someone at risk at all, which we do, um, with the newborn, etc. And so, um, um, uh, uh, anyway, so so that those are the the, the perspectives um, that I have. So I'm gonna start reading from the chat, and um, if anyone would like to take on the mic go ahead and share with us. Um, so Soviet, hi Soviet, good to see you. Um, he had to leave Salt Lake City. Um, on um, online classes stress, stress me out more than traditional classes. I agree, I agree. I haven't seen my family for about a year. I, I hear you, um, same thing here. My sister just got her visa to come and visit us. And then they had to shut down, for, she has to come through Paris and then um, uh, Paris shut down uh, its airports and, you know, um, that was it. And then the embassy closed. Um, clubs and bars are closed for Jeremiah. I haven't been to any um, uh, dining out since I have kids, since I had kids. So um, uh, I, I do miss that, but for uh, not just because of the pandemic. <laughs> um, lack of social interaction and exercise, um, nano brick one, two, three. Um, Abby says, uh, not in my, okay, not in my bars are open. Um, bars reopened kinda. Okay, on again, online classes also make catching up to lecture easier. So that's the positive. Um, you can speed up the videos, but you know, we could, most people, most teachers record their classes anyway. Classes went online, um, non-existent. Um, Jake says, worried about parents getting sick and, and dying, filed for unemployment. I'm so sorry to hear that. 
Um, I also resonate with you. My parents are in their um, late 70s um, and they are in a, in a very hot zone with a positivity rate of like almost 100%. There's like significant, uh, a lot of cases. And um, um, so, so I do hear you, this, the stress of that. And I'm not even close to them to see them. So uh, I, I hear you there. Um, Matthew says, school has been much harder and there's been a few relatives. Um, we've seen positive. I met a nice girl and we got married. Hey, congratulations, Matthew. Um, that's, that's great news. And I got to spend more time with my family, new perspectives. I've seen more of what is really important. That's, that's so true. And I've seen how humanity can band together if we need to. That's, that's a great perspective. Um, motivation at an all time low. I'm sorry, Adam. Um, hopefully we, we can get that to, uh, to but now th think about the following. Like, how, it's not gonna get worse. Okay, so we're like pretty much hitting rock bottom. And then what happens after that? There's only one way we're gonna go up. We're gonna, we're gonna everything is gonna get better. So think about that, okay? Except for my ankle maybe that I hurt, you know, and like when you're in your thirties, you're like nothing gets better anymore physically, but um, think, think of it this way. It's, it's gonna get better, guys, it's gonna get better. And so um, uh, the motivation is gonna get back, just, just hold on. Um, I got furloughed in October, Megan, I'm sorry to hear that. Um, um, Jake uh, got pregnant, bought a house, wow, okay. Um, Dasha, hi Dasha, good to see you. Online classes and lack of interaction with classmates, had a fallout with our roommates, so many of them having lost their jobs. Again, I'm so sorry. Positives, got my own place and reestablished a bond with old friends and family. The two perspectives have changed enough is that nothing is a given and health is wealth. That's a great way to put it. And I, I, I completely agree with that. And nothing is given. No one is going gonna, is gonna to fix things for you. You got you to gotta make sure that you are um, um, resilient so that you can help your family and others around you, you know. Um, I got my recall letter on Christmas Eve, um, Megan. Um, congratulations and um, positive new job and new house congrats so there's a mix of things um, people think they need toilet paper over food people hate people they don't understand um, okay um, I, I I suppose that's also probably because of kind of what's been going on um, w w with politics possibly um, but yeah, I, I wish we can hear each other more and just, um, um, there, there's a book called um, How to Have Impossible Conversations um, uh, by Peter Bogosian. I, I highly recommend, recommend looking at that book. Um, teaches you how to make um, steel man arguments, essentially, um, to understand another person's position so that you can resonate with what, what the, you know what they're meaning anyway positives classes in bed in pjs <laughs> um lack of social interaction online class is difficult again i can agree more social life is basically gone it will be back it will be back if anything you know um uh, if you are an entrepreneur of the inter entrepreneur type which i find um you know american education kind of encourages that i grew up in a french system education it focuses more on the um, a theory, um, but what I find when I came to America and what I find with the American education system, it encourages bootstrapping and entrepreneurship. So if you're an entrepreneur, what is gonna happen after this is over? Like what businesses, think about what businesses are gonna pick up if you're an investor or entrepreneur or something like that. People, are, people already realize that they need social interaction. And so I, in my opinion, I think restaurant businesses are gonna boom after this, um, things that have social interaction, travel, vacations, all of those are gonna boom. Um, and, and, you know, th sometimes when, um, um, you know, the, the, uh, if you've grown wheat, <laughs> you know, the, the grain of wheat has to die to give rise to many other um, um, uh, plants, right? And so the plant has to die to give rise to many other. So as, as some businesses disappear, many other businesses are gonna come up. So this may be an opportunity for entrepreneurship. Enjoy online classes. I relearned to love swimming. Um, online class like motivation. 
I don't have to leave my house. Um, okay, but I think you should. <laughs> I think we all should leave our houses. Um, um, and best part is like, you know, you go to a trail and there's no one, um, which is great, right? That's why we love Utah is that it's, it used to be not that crowded. Now it's not, it's gonna be very crowded pretty soon, but um, at least in the last few, few months, it wasn't as crowded, um, at least to the trails I go to. I um, was able to stay in my home country for a longer time, stayed with your family, um, new job opportunity, loss of business, working in restaurant is industry, loss of social interaction with friends and family, purchasing and building a sprinter into an adventure van, plus having the flexibility to use it all summer. So kind of being um, uh, mobile, I suppose, learning how to make and perfecting sourdough. Great. <laughs> How much I value the time I get to spend with family. That's that's one of the best things. It's like um, I, I think our parents. After all of this, um, um, our you know all of us we're gonna have like more respect for our parents and more value for them um, um, and, and having them in our lives and family. All right, I had time to build a house with my wife. That is awesome, Carson. <laughs> um, that's really great. Maybe. Um, Maybe you can teach us, give us some tips at the end of the semester, um, how to build a house. Um, all right, so there are so many comments, um, mixed positives and negatives, develop self reliance, meditation spiritually from Alexander. Um, Abby, I learned about health and better eating habits and have lost 40 pounds. Wow, that's great. I gained like 20 pounds. Um, and like I started, you know, using, uh, I used to use like um, calorie tracking and then with everything going on, I was like, Oh man, I you know we bought so many steaks early on, and we're like, who's gonna eat them? So we, we would eat, um, we would eat these delicious steaks every other day. And uh, anyway, um, so uh, we'll get to calorie counting um, soon. <laughs> Enjoying time home uh, and extra time with family. Um, very little in-person interaction. So that's been a common theme. Um, class is nice at 3 a.m. when it's quiet, um, just how unprepared we are for this type of thing. So um, I think we spent quite a bit of time on the comments. I'm sorry if I didn't echo your, um, your comment, um, but I will keep this chat um, and I'll save it. And then I'm gonna continue on with the course now. We'll take another break when we talk about um, online learning. So. Um, if you haven't uh, been on the Canvas website, many of you have been, um, many of you have read the syllabus already. I'm gonna go over the syllabus and administrative stuff really quickly, but I'd like you to spend time on the syllabus um, yourselves and, excuse me, make sure you understand everything um, um, that is put on there. Um, the uh, primary website is Canvas, so that's your reference point. I will eventually, essentially mimic the canvas front page on my website um, for future generations um, because for example the, twen the um, 2019 installment of the course um, is already on my website so you can go there look at the lectures etc so it's like a, you know see what's what, what I taught last year and what the assignments were um, all lectures will be recorded and posted on my youtube channel you can just google that Professor Tony Saad, Numerical Methods, and you'll hit my channel and you can look at the, and the link to my channel is on the syllabus. Um, links to the videos will also be posted on Canvas. So if there's a lecture, once it's on YouTube, I put the link on Canvas. Um, I will communicate with you via email through the Canvas email setup. So I think that's connected to your um, email. So make sure you check that regularly. I will have office hours every Tuesday from 3.30 to 4.30 p.m. or by appointment. appointment. Um, there's a Zoom, this is my personal Zoom link. So I'll just open up the Zoom, be hanging out there. Um, feel free to just join in and, you know, startle me, say hello, <laughs> you know, and uh, I, I, we can have a um, discussion. Uh, please do come with clear questions. Um, so, you know, take a moment before you join in the room, think about what you want to ask. Um, be very specific so that we can make our time very effective so that we have time for other students as well. Um, this is my uh, work email, tony.sad at camange.uda.edu. Use this exclusively for personal communication, like 
I don't know, you got bit by a crab and you can't make it to class or you need an extension for um, homework or something, um, communicate with me about these things to my, to my personal email. Um, work, uh, uh, sorry, class related things. We're gonna discuss those on Piazza, which I'll bring up in a second. Um, or by email on Canvas, um, you know, other things. Um, even if you have like a question about the homework, feel free to just um, email, um, email me and the TAs on Canvas. But Piazza is gonna be our primary communication venue for homework related technical questions where you can help each other, okay? Just don't give each other the answer, more on that in a second. We will have four help sessions to help you with homework and exam preparation. Um, the TAs are Dylan Feilau and Mahmoud El Mahlawi. Um, uh, so Dylan was a former student of mine in this class and Mahmoud is a graduate student in our department. He's doing his PhD. Um, the help sessions will be on something called InSpace. If you haven't tried it yet, um, um, it'll be really cool when you try it. Help sessions will start, um, I don't think we have a help session today. Um, we will start the session on uh, Thursday. So Thursday, we will have the first help session with Dylan. Um, just follow this link on InSpace and um, it's a really cool environment that is more am amenable for um, um, help sessions. So uh, we have four help sessions, Mondays, Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays um, as listed here. For technical help and support, um, go to Piazza. The link is on Canvas, and there's also an, a, a hyperlink on, in the syllabus. You click on it. This is the access code. Feel free to chat, talk with each other. Um, the TAs will check it, and myself, we will check it on a regular schedule, not daily. Like you know, I you know, one of the TAs might check every Monday at Friday between three and four, for example. So you know, eventually we'll get into a cycle, but. Um, you know, we, we don't have Piazza open 24 hours a day, uh, okay? But feel free to help each other. Um, there's no textbook on this in this class. Um, I collect the material from primarily from this book, um, Chopra and Canali, um, Numerical Methods for Engineers. Uh, feel free to get it and reference it. I uh, get a lot of homework assignments from it, um, exam problems, and a lot of discussion um, items from it. Occasionally, I'll share a few chapters with you. I'll put those on Canvas for further reading, okay? So assignments, quizzes, and um, exams. Um, hold on, I have some people still um, a little bit late, okay? Um, so we will hold regular quizzes. Um, to test your qualitative understanding of the subject matter. So these are like five minute qu quizzes, two or three questions, for example. Um, they account for 5% of the grade, so, but they test more of your qualitative understanding, like, um, uh, you know, is relative error uh, more useful than absolute error? Things we're discussing, but more kind of general understanding um, is: Does this figure have a higher standard deviation than this this distribution, for example? Um, so things like that. Um, assignments: We might we will have up to nine assignments that will be posted on Canvas. All submissions will be electronic using what's called Jupyter Notebooks. More on that later. Um, if you need to do your homework in something else, please um, discuss that with me, um, like right like as soon as possible. Um, homework will be assigned on Thursday and is due the following Thursday. Um, and after that, you'll have a 25% daily penalty for late submissions. So you essentially have three days uh, and then it's not worth it. Um, those with formal CDS forms are provided extensions as needed, but no more than three days. Why? Because after three days, I'm gonna post the solution. And that's essentially the end of the penalty um, grace period with penalty. So, um, but those with CDS forms will be given an extension as needed. Um, solution will be posted three days after the homework is due. If you need to request an extension due, you know, to certain circumstances, which will happen, um, please let me know immediately, but no later than three days after the homework is assigned. So assign the homework on Thursday, you know, by Saturday, Sunday, I know incidents, my, things might happen later, but if you start on your homework early and you have most of it covered and then you come and tell me, look, something happened, you know, the day before the homework, uh, this is what I've worked on, then, you know, we can work on this. But requests like that, send those, um, you can send those to my um, uh, email at kamenj.chuta.edu or through the email on Canvas, okay? 
Um, assignments will receive some partial credit. Um, and I'll just discuss this shortly. Um, but one important thing to recognize is that, so a Jupyter Notebook, as we will discuss later, is a, a rich programming and text type of file format. So you can put discussion, you can put math equations, you can put code in just one document. In the past, you used to do your homework, like you would write a MATLAB code, you would produce the plots in like PNG or PDF figures, and then you open up a Word document, you start typing your discussion, you copy the figure, insert it, and you know, there's like a three layer of um, workflow that is, I think is, is quite, Cumbersome, and then you submit the the the, the PDF and the uh, and the code. Um, with Jupyter notebooks, you mix all of that together. Think of it as a Word document that allows you to write um, um, code in Python in the same document. Um, so it's just going to be one document, and you'll send me you'll upload that document. But that document needs to execute. So when I go and click um, run all document, it needs to run. Okay. So make sure it runs before you submit it. If it doesn't run, you're not gonna get credit, okay? Now you can contest your grade later and say, because we're not gonna find bugs for you, your code needs to run. Now later on, you can say, oh, you know, shoot, I forgot to, you know, insert this, um, you change the for loop from I to I, and from N to N plus one, for example, or like I forgot to import this library, you know, then, then you'll receive partial credit for that. But that will be your job um, to do. Best thing, make sure your code runs um, before you upload it, okay? Um, so we'll not debug the code for you. It is your responsibility to make sure that the notebooks are complete and executed without errors. Now, this is where the help sessions help. You're writing your code, you're getting errors, um, like, hey, Dylan or Mahmoud, what's going on? Help me debug this, et cetera. And then you nail it and then you upload. Okay, um, quizzes for exams. We are gonna have three exams and a final. Okay, now, first exam is going to be next Thursday. It's called exam zero. It's a simple exam that tests your prerequisite knowledge. Okay. It's going to be a short exam, almost like a amplified quiz, uh, maybe 10, 15 minutes tops um, that tests your prerequisite knowledge. Okay. All of the exams will have study guides and sample exams provided. So after this lecture, I'm going to upload the study guide for exam zero and a sample exam zero. It will test um, your knowledge on essentially differentiation, um, some vector algebra, um, a very slight integration and elementary um, matrices, okay? So I'll provide a study guide and a sample exam. Um, we will have two types of exams. Um, we might have handwritten type exams or online exams. A handwritten type exam is essentially exam I, I write and I typeset and I send you the PDF and then you know we sit together your cameras are turned on and you work on your exam and then you finish you scan it and you upload it to canvas and then we take it we start grading it etc typically it will contain about maybe five big questions you know there's a lot of derivations going on you'll get plenty of partial credit that's the handwritten type exam that's a traditional way of doing exams as if you're in the classroom um, other types of exams are going to be purely online. Now, if the exam is going to be online, um, you're going to have a lot of questions, 15 to 20 questions, maybe 25 questions, but those are all low stakes questions. So things like, again, um, is relative error more and more useful than um, um, absolute error or like which of these plots has a larger standard deviation and so on. Okay, so be these types of exams like, like um, um, amplified quizzes, okay, but you'll not receive partial credit on those. Instead, you'll get to do multiple attempts, potentially two attempts. So you do the exam, you're like, oh, you know, I could do better, you can take it another time. I will take your maximum grade. So, you know, if, if you feel like you wanna do another attempt, you might get in a higher grade, go ahead and do that. Um, I'll take the maximum grade, but, be aware that a, a questions are gonna be randomized across students and across attempts. So I have what's called question banks, questions similar in spirit, okay? So similar in spirit, you might get um, two figures for two plots and other student might get two, two different plots with different standard deviations, right? So the answers will be different, the answers will be shuffled. Another, a second attempt, 
might produce an entirely different set of questions. Now, the questions will be similar in spirit, of course, right? If I'm asking about standard deviation, I'm going to have questions similar in spirit, but they're going to be different. So, um, you know, those are the, the um, policies for these exams. Um, I am more inclined to think that we're going to do online exams this year, um, but we might have to do a, a handwritten exam depending on, you know, how things um, go and your knowledge evolves in the class. All right, so that's all spelled out over here. The um, ex mid exam one and two um, are gonna be, so all exams will be during class session, except for the final where I put the date on the syllabus and that's determined by the registrar. But exams one and two will only cover recent material. The final exam covers everything, okay? It's comprehensive. Homework assignments. So this is the partial credit policy I mentioned um, earlier. We we'll receive some partial credit. Um, and here's the policy. If the, your method is correct, no errors, you get 100%. If the method in, is correct, but you, you have some arithmetic or minor programming errors, you, you lose 20% per error, okay? So if you had a slight you know, arithmetic mistake or a slight, you, know, you looped from, N, from zero to N instead of N plus one, that's a minor arithmetic error. Um, so, for example, you had a typo in one of the factors, although your formula is correct, or you looped over n plus one instead of n. Um, however, it is your responsibility to make sure that your code executes. I, I, I have to stress that. We will not be able to identify bugs in your code. If your code does not execute, you will not receive credit. However, you, if you identify a minor, say, let's say you submit, you know, and then you see the solution, you're like, oh, you know, I, I, I missed this. There should have looped from to n plus one. Come and tell us. Okay, and we'll, we'll be able to tell if this is a minor programming error or not. So you lose 20% for minor error. If your solution contains a minor theoretical error, that's a 40%, um, uh, you lose 40% for that. So for example, in calculating the sample based standard deviation, you use N instead of N minus one in the denominator. That's a minor theoretical error because that indicates a misunderstanding of the difference between the sample and the, the population-based standard deviation, which we will discuss in class. Um, all other errors, you will not get credit. The reason is that homework is should mimic what your real life is going to be like when you're working on projects, and you have to get it right. You cannot get it partially correct. Okay, you have to get it right. Um, so that's why we allow some partial some partial credit. Again, the, for exams, if it's handwritten, you'll get adequate partial credit, plenty of it. If it's online, you'll get a lot of low stakes questions, but instead of partial credit, you're gonna get uh, multiple attempts, okay? Um, this is the tentative grading um, um, groups. Um, so uh, assignments, 20%. Um, the first exam next week, next Thursday is gonna be 5% of the total grade. Um, two midterm exams, accounting for 40%, quizzes 10%, final 25%. And this is the structure of the grading. And again, this is tentative as we see how the class evolves, how you all are doing. And, you know, if there's a general trend in the class, then, you know, I, I, I reserve the right to alter the grade so that, you know, um, uh, it reflects how, how the mood of the class is doing. Um, in general, I do not curve. Um, because your performance should not depend on someone else's performance. That's your performance. But if there's an indication that, you know, I am the problem, like I created an, an outrageous exam that, you know, was <laughs> beyond anyone's means, then, you know, that problem is with me. We might repeat the exam or I'll adjust the grade somehow. Okay. So, um, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll keep that discussion ongoing, but Currently, this is kind of the standard. I think this is a, a, a reasonable balance between work at home, quizzes, and, and exams, okay? Okay, now, perspective on numerical methods. Um, before I do that, I'm gonna give you like a two minute break. Um, don't forget to mute your microphone and um, your video, okay? And we will be back in a few minutes, okay? I'll give you like two minutes, okay? Zoom recording, all right? 
So um, now that we're done with some of the syllabus and administrative stuff, if you have comments and concerns, um, please go through the syllabus first again and review these slides and then let me know for if you have any um, clarifications you'd like. And now that's behind us, we can talk a little bit about what new medical methods is going to um, do for you in your life and what you expect to learn. Um, I have a detailed list of learning objectives in the syllabus, um, so feel free to go through that. I'm going to give you a different perspective over here. So in your chemical engineering class, classes, um, you will learn about what's called fundamental conservation laws. So these conservation laws, they essentially are at the core of engineering. Everything we do in engineering is based on the great conservation laws, and you hear this in physics as well. So what's a conservation conversation law? <laughs> what's a conservation law, for example? I want you to take a minute and think about what a conservation law is and give me, let me know and give me an example, all right? So I'm gonna start a little timer over here, one minute. Feel free to put this in the chat or just speak up. Okay, we got um, answers, momentum and energy from Hayden um, and Braden. Um, conservation of mass, great example, conservation of energy and mass energy. Yep, you guys all nailed it. Yes, exactly. So a conservation law essentially tells us that things have to be conserved. They cannot be lost. They cannot just suddenly disappear, disappear right? Um, so it's not like magic or David Copperfield, he just disappears. Things have to be conserved. They, 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 can, they can change form. So for example, you know, um, um, energy can change into heat or um, mechanical energy and motion, but it's still the total should be, should sum up to whatever you started with. Um, so you're gonna learn in chemical engineering about the fundamental conservation laws, mass, momentum, energy, species, and so on and so forth. And um, you are going to learn also about approximations and models um, to, to try to address or solve these conservation laws. So when you are faced with a problem, you ask yourself, what is conserved in this problem? Is it momentum? Okay, so momentum conservation tells me that, you know, these two balls have impacted and they're going to bounce back. And this is, this is, these are the equations that govern the momentum conservation of this problem. Um, then you come up with approximation and models to either figure out what terms are missing in this in these equations because you, you're gonna face a lot of these things. There are so many unno unknowns um, um, in, in terms of the governing equations and you're gonna find approximations and models for those. Um, and then you will come up with what's called an algorithm or set of steps to obtain an answer. Previously, you've been used to doing this by hand. You use pencil and paper and calculator and you get a solution. Alternatively, you can use numerical tools um, to help generate plots and calculate numbers and so on and so forth. Um, and if the problem is more complicated than just a calculator, you might need um, Excel or Python or MATLAB, some programming language, C++. Okay. In all your other chemical engineering courses, you will learn about these two top layers where you learn the principles and the concepts. In 1703, you used, learned Python and Excel to just do the numerical tools. So there was no connection between the physics that you're learning and the programming. And numerical methods is gonna give you this connection. So numerical methods is gonna bring in the solution methodology from the physics um, of the problem and combining the programming and the techniques you learned in 1703 and bring them together to solve more complicated problems. I'm gonna give you an overview about my research group. Um, it's called the Multiscale Simulation um, Group or um, Chem Computational Engineering Laboratory. Um, I have uh, two PhD students with one coming in. I'll tell you a little bit about how I built my entire career on simulation and numerical methods. So simulation uses a lot of numerical methods. Um, and simulation is a new kind of science. Historically, science has been made by making an observation. So for example, you, see things falling to the ground. Um, in fact, my, my son yesterday was watching this show called um, Dino Train. And for the parents in, the, in, the, in, the, in this class, you might be aware of this. this is like there's a, a PBS has a 
thousands of episodes of it. It's a, it's a lot of fun. And one of the characters always has a hypothesis and he's like, hmm, he heard a noise and he said, I have a hypothesis. And my son is like three, asked me, what's a, what's a hypothesis? And, and uh, you know, I started explaining to him that you have an observation, then you come up with a hypothesis to explain potentially what that, how to, what that, what that observation entails or what made that observation, that thing occur in reality. And um, so I mimic here, I give the example of Newton's, the apple falling on Newton's head. Um, you know, it's a dramatization of what really happened, but you do an observation, you come up with a hypothesis or a model of why things fall to the ground. So the model in this case is that there is a force called gravity that pulls everything together, okay? And um, the model for that is that the force, that force is proportional to the mass. And that proportionality constant is the gravitational constant. Um, the thing that pulls things, the, 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 the how much, by how much that uh, for mass is scaled um, uh, with gravity. Then you go and test the hypothesis and that's called an experiment. You go start dropping things and measure and, you know, figure out that's how they figured out the gravitational constant you go to different heights different elevations different altitudes right um, at sea level you know in the in the uintas and so on and so forth and then you refine your hypothesis there's a cycle like you know you find that something doesn't work um, we need to adjust our hypothesis a little bit so for example going back to the classical mechanics you have to refine your hypothesis when you are in relativistic mechanics when things are approaching the speed of light, right? Or things at large scale in the universe. So that's how you would refine a, a hypothesis. That's what Einstein did. Um, he refined essentially Newton's, um, uh, Newton's laws. But how do you experiment on things um, that you can't experiment on? Like how would you experiment on an, how would you do an experiment to do a exploding star, right? Like a supernova. How would you experiment on a hurricane? Turns out they, they have some models for hurricanes, but it's you cannot create a hurricane, um, you know, in a city. Um, how do you test for a nuclear accident? You, you'll just, you'll be done, right? So you do the test once and we, you have to sacrifice um, essentially uh, yourself for uh, to, do, to do an experiment like that. Um, how do you experiment on a coal boiler? It's very expensive, really. You can put some wires and things in it, but have, if you've seen a coal boiler, these things are huge and they're very hot. There's like, it's very difficult to get measurements in coal boilers. Um, um, there are other examples like flameless combustion where you don't see a flame. Suddenly something combusts in a room everywhere and there's no flame. So you cannot see that there is heat being generated. You could literally burn yourself. And so, um, oh, and so, okay, I skipped my, pressed the wrong arrow, okay. So it's often expensive, dangerous, and impossible. Um, simulation comes into the rescue, and that's what my, my work does. Um, and it's all based on numerical methods, okay? It's a new kind of science where we take the traditional model of science and engineering um, and supplement that with um, simulation. So instead of just doing experiment and refining experiment, now we do experiment to develop fine-grained models. So for example, how do particles collide with each other? That's very expensive to do in a simulation, but experimentally we can observe something and we take that model and feed it into the simulation as a basic law, run the simulation on the coal boiler, on the expensive star, et cetera, and then refine our observation, right? So see, is this what we see in the universe? Two galaxies colliding, is this, is this what we are seeing currently? Oh, maybe we have to refine one of our uh, one of our um, basic laws and the simulation and so on. So I'll show you some eye candy here. These are results from um, from my code um, uh, that we run here at the University of Utah. This is one of the boilers we we looked at experimentally. And what I want to do here, I'm going to show you take a slice, this gray little slice um, in the middle at the bottom of the coal boiler. So what you're seeing here are the gases. Um, so there's coal being injected, um, it's kind of suspended in the gas, and as it swirls around, it starts burning, um, and then it exits um, through the exit of the boiler. But what I want to show you here is if you take a top view at that um, um, uh, gray slice that I've shown, this is what you would see in real life. 
It's called a fireball. That's what you, you know, I think, I think whoever took that picture, uh, the camera melted, it's really, really hot in there. But that's what you see inside the coal boiler. So this fireball actually heats pipes, um, water pipes along the coal boiler and they turn into steam and then the steam subsequently um, goes into a turbine and generates electricity, okay? But this is a top view of what you see now because this is very fast. Um, the picture kind of smooths things out based on the shutter speed. Um, and I'm gonna superimpose the results from my simulation, okay? So initially we're starting to form the fireball, but look at the pattern as it emerges, okay? Now, what I'm providing with my simulation is an instantaneous understanding of the entire motion of the motion of the gases and what's happening in that boiler. And that is tremendous at every point on that video, I can click and I can see the velocity, the speed, um, the momentum, the energy. And so it gives you tremendous information that you could not otherwise see with experiments. With the experiments, in this case, you might only get an idea of the um, um, collective quantities um, of, of the problem. All right, there are other simulations I could show you, but more importantly is I wanna share with you a recent project that I did for the Utah Symphony um, and how we help them um, get back to performance, uh, to performing. So in June, they reached out to us. They were telling us, can we go back on stage and be safe? Clearly, string instruments can wear masks. They can be socially distant, but wind instruments are the problem. You know, the flute, the trombone, the trumpet, um, the oboe, the bassoon. And if you've played a wind instrument, you know how much respiratory droplets accumulate and potentially get emitted. So with any viral transmission, um, what you worry about is what's called aerosols. So the large droplets, and that's where the six foot social distancing for COVID-19 comes from, is that large droplets typically deposit and just lead to surface contamination. And if you're, well, you know, you have your hand sanitizer with you, you're, you're okay. If you sanitize the surface, you're okay. But it's the smaller droplets that are, get aerosolized, that's the word aerosol, they become suspended in the air. They can move for very, uh, to very long distances. And there's a risk potentially from wind instruments of turning large droplets into very small aerosolized droplets, which might infect everyone on the stage. And so we wanted to understand what's going on um, with the Utah Symphony. And this is exactly what, what we did. So what I'm gonna show you next is two videos. Start with the left video, the video to your left. Um, that is the traditional um, orchestra arrangement for the Utah Symphony at Abravanol Hall. Um, if you haven't heard of Abravanol, if you haven't been there, you should go see it once um, um, the shutdown is over, once things are back to normal. It's a beautiful place. Um, so anyway, um, we're doing the, we're taking the initial arrangement of the orchestra and we're looking at what you're looking at are the particle concentrations of emissions from all of these wind instruments. So these are particles per liter and there's a lot. Red is 10 particles per liter, um, orange is one particle per liter and yellow is 0.1 particle per liter. There's a lot of accumulation on the stage. And if one of the wind instruments is infected, you know, they might infect everyone. Um, the figure to the bottom shows you the an average kind of uh, distribution of the particle. And you see there's a lot of color. Blue is essentially um, uh, no particles, no, no infectious particles, and, but red is very high and white is somewhere in between. Now to your right is our solution to the Utah Symphony. What we did, we opened the doors on the side. So we modified the ventilation in the, in the, in the Abravanel Hall and we moved instruments around. So think, think about it. Um, if someone is smoking in your car, what would you do? What would you do? You blast the AC, you open the windows and you tell them to sit in the back if you don't like smoking, clearly. Um, you know, and you, you say your grandfather is smoking in the car and you, know, the, you ask them, please sit in the back close to the window so that all the um, smoke can come out. And this is exactly the strategy we followed. We put all the potentially high emitters close to the return vents and close to the doors. And, um, and this is what we created. And so um, the figure to the bottom right shows you the average concentration distribution after our solution. So anyway, this is the power of simulation. 
Um, we had a um, couple of interviews and things, you know, if you Google, um, you know, uh, Saad, Abravanel Hall, et cetera, you'd find a bunch of things. We had a great KUR interview, but if you are interested in listening me to me talk about this, um, the, I'm giving a seminar this Friday at Auburn. So it will be on Zoom, um, but you have to register. And this is the registration link. Just go click on it, register, um, take a second and then um, you'll get access to the seminar. And if, if you're interested, it's at 8 a.m. Utah time. Um, you know, you're welcome to join and see more details about what we did. Anyway, so, but what it takes to do multi-scale simulation, you need to know math, physics and engineering, programming and numerical methods. So all of those come together. Um, and you might not be, do, be doing multi-scale simulation or simulation uh, in your career, but, you're going to need to know a lot of engineering. If you want to be competitive in the market, you need to know programming, numerical methods, data science, all of those kind of become related to each other. Okay, I hope that was motivating enough for you. All right, some survival tips for this class is that first, this class is not about, is about numerical methods and not about programming. I'm not going to teach you programming. This, this um, could have been done in 1703 or can you build this on your own? So the goal is not to teach you programming, rather teach you numerical methods, but you cannot do numerical methods without programming. So you really need to brush up on your programming skills like right now, um, yesterday, you need to brush up on your programming skills. Uh, we use programming extensively. Now I will introduce Python, I will guide you, I will show you tips and tricks, we'll start easy, we'll try to simplify things as much as possible. We're gonna use just the right amount of programming to allow us to do to solve the problem at hand. Um, and most of the time I will share the significant code with you. What will be left for you to do is essentially repeat the same thing um, for different numbers of equations, for example, um, gather timings, right? Do a plot, so little things like that. But that is gonna be your responsibility. Um, just to clarify, I'm not teaching you programming. I would love to teach a class on programming, but then we would not be learning numerical methods, okay? Um, you want to start your homework early, um, look at it. I suggest you look at the homework the first day it's assigned, get an idea of what it is, and then every day work on a problem and then soon you'll be done. Okay. And, or you will have enough time to figure out if there's something wrong. Okay. Um, and if you need help, uh, review class notes prior to the lecture. Um, so typically I post my, I try to post my notes before the lecture, but because I adopt an active learning technique. I don't know how that's gonna go with over Zoom, but it will be hard to give you the answer before the class. But what you can do is go to my lectures from last year. Pardon me, lectures this year are not gonna be that different from lectures last year. So you can find those on my website, um, all the lectures from the previous year. So before coming to class, open the slides, Look at the, you know, what's what's what we covered, and then you know, gives you at least some exposure to the material. Okay, um, try to rework all the examples we did in class, and if you are stuck, I'm happy to help you. We are, the TAs are happy to help you. Um, go on Piazza, use the help sessions, contact me, probably in that order. Um, but I'm not going to do the homework for you. So, you know, if you ask me things like, "Is this the right answer?" I'm going to respond to you. What do you think? Okay, just. That, that's kind of now Google now actually Gmail suggests that for me. So don't ask me a question like that, right? Um, ask questions like your gut stuck in, in a for at a particular you know spot. Um, and I'm happy to help you there. Like, you know, and I'll give you, I won't give you the answer, I'll give you an idea of how to figure it out yourself because that's the most rewarding thing, right? Is for you to figure it out. I'll help you to figure it out. Um, sometimes I I can't. So, um, but most of the time I can help you to figure it out. Okay, um, ask, discuss with your colleagues, you go on Piazza, um, do study groups. I encourage all of that. Try not to cheat, it's not gonna help you in life, okay? If you cheat, if someone does the work for you, what's the point, okay? You're not gonna learn anything. It's, trust me, it will catch up with you later in life, okay? All right, um, getting an answer is not the goal. Um, I don't care if you get the right answer. What I care is, uh, 
Well, in the homework, I do care that you get the right answer and online exams, but what's more important is the critical thinking. You know, that's why we'll give some partial credit, but it's important to develop critical thinking about um, the process of getting the answer. Does it make sense? One strategy is every time you get an answer, ask yourself, does this make sense? Let me give you an example. Um, and this happened in my, uh, this happened to me in, in when I was taking undergraduate heat transfer. We had two spherical balls um, radiating in outer space. One of them was a hundred degrees and one of them was a thousand degrees. And I was, and it was an absolute nothing, absolute dark space, nothing, no star, nothing, just the two spheres. And I was asked to find the temperature in the middle and I run the calculations, et cetera. And I got like 5,000 degrees. And this is a hundred degree sphere, a thousand degree sphere in the middle of 5,000 degrees. I could have circled the answer and closed closed the notebook, but then I said, this doesn't make sense. How can I get 5,000 degrees if I have only 100 and 1,000? There's no way on earth or in space for this to happen unless there was like another, you know, there was a star in the middle, but there wasn't, right? So this doesn't make sense, okay? So that's more important. If you write, you're running out of time, turns out I had a calculation and the Boltzmann constant, um, a, a, a mistake in the Boltzmann constant. Okay, so, you know, things like that. That's what's more important, okay? Um, writing code is not the goal. I, the goal. I don't care if you write a super highly efficient code, um, but you got to write a decent code, right? But writing code is not the goal. Getting the answer, getting insight into the answer is the goal. So generating plots, getting insight into the problem, that's the goal. Um, and how you present your results is often as important as the results themselves. So how you interpret the results, how you discuss them, how you share them. That's why engineers make big bucks, okay? Because we can take a complex thing and dissect it and, and uh, well, at least we have to learn to do that, um, okay? And that is actually a useful tip in, in, in your life, okay? Um, all right. So next, I want to take a moment and discuss with you um, effective online learning for feedback to me in this class and for just an interesting discussion. So again, I want you to um, think about the following. What do you think is the worst thing you see during online classes? Clearly, you've been through more online classes um, than I have. And um, uh, you know, I'd love to hear from you what do you think the worst thing is like you know, just going through slides blindly or, or whatever, like a long class without any break, whatever, whatever um, you think has been the worst. Um, what is your favorite thing during online classes? Like um, you see it's been done in, a, in one of the classes. Um, and what would you change if you were teaching this class? What, how would you do it, right? So it's easy. Um, my mother used to tell me, I would come and tell her, you should do this and that. And she would tell me it's easy to wage war using binoculars or on a map, I'll do this and do that. But doing the thing is actually um, more difficult. So, so in other words, easier said than done. So what would you do if you were teaching this class instead of me? What would you, what's one thing you would do um, if you were teaching my class, okay? And trust me, if, 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 if what you say is like, yeah, this makes sense, I will implement it, all right? So. Um, same thing, take a moment. Um, I'd love to hear your voice, okay? Um, and get to know you more in person. So I encourage you to just unmute yourself and just talk um, or just through the chat. Okay, all right. Worst, random presentations with no slides to help structure and no defined goals each lecture. So learning objectives and goals per lecture. Um, great, great comment. So essentially knowing what, what we're gonna get out of this lecture. I like it when professors make polls with small problems to keep us engaged and help us think through problem solving processes. Great idea. Um, so I, I have more to say about that, Abby. Maybe next lecture, I'll talk more about active learning. Worst thing was a class last semester that had many small assignments and didn't have a simple way to see what was due when. Okay, so a lack of proper organization. You will see in my syllabus, I have a tentative schedule, which I usually stick to pretty, pretty well. Um, so you can get, have an idea of what you're up against the entire semester, okay? Um, so the biggest thing I do is make sure deadlines were front and center with reminders the morning or night before if there are many assignments, okay? So I, 
I, I can't send a reminder every time there's homework due, put that in your calendar. What I would do is we would take, you know, every Thursday there's an assignment, it's due the other Saturday, or take my calendar and put it in your Google calendar so that you know what you're up against, okay? Stay on topic, don't start talking about wizards and dragons. Um, do, do homework problems as in class examples. All right. <laughs> so Braden doesn't like um, a lot of tangents. Now, given that this is gonna be Zoom, we might have to do discussions like this one. I hope you don't consider this dragons and, and, and wizards. Maybe that was a literal example that happened in, in one of your classes before. It's not able to connect to people you don't know, which would make it easier to break down problems doing homework alone. I see. Um, I, I do not have an answer to that. And if the university would allow it, you know, it would be nice if students could gather like under a tree, you know, or like, you know, in a public, in a park where there's open space and, you know, they can talk to each other, um, but, you know, the university doesn't allow this. And so we have to follow that, that protocol. Um, uh, yeah, it's hard to do to get online, um, um, develop online connections um, very well that way. Difficult to get group interactions. Yeah, same thing. I personally like working through examples. Okay, noted. Um, just jumping through slides, solution example without much explanation, giving the first two steps, skip the next aid, the answer presented. Okay, creation, creating a class group chat, or uh, either group me or Discord. So I'm not gonna go on Discord or group me. So I know there are some groups over there. Um, we're gonna stick to Piazza um, because that's something that's been approved by the university and things we, we like using for other safety and security reasons. Um, so I would stick to that. There are groups on Discord. I know some people are sharing homework, solutions, et cetera. You know, you be the judge, you be the judge of that. You are mature individuals and you make your own decisions regarding that. So be, be careful. Uh, anyway, what solutions are floating out there? Um, good organization. Worst thing, not having examples to show how to apply principles we are learning, great. Okay, when teachers make multiple short videos to watch during the week. Um, so Sydney, that's a great comment. I, I, I wish I could flip this class, um, but eventually that might happen. Unfortunately, that's not gonna be the case this year. And trust me, to me, the worst thing is sitting in a lecture for an hour and a half, um, but, but if the speaker is engaging and changes tone and, you know, keeps you, um, pulls you back to the lecture. I think it's doable to fit, to sit through a long lecture. And I will try to do that. So, you know, with my accent and my loud voice and sometimes, you know, um, um, low voice, I think, I hope I can keep you engaged enough, but please do let me, if things become um, monotonic, please do let me know. Um, assignments not completely listed on Canvas, but instead some other pages. Oh, everything be on, on Canvas posting polls, but only on the Zoom feature. So when going through a recorded lecture, you can't see the problem. So quizzes will be on Canvas. So when we have a quiz on, and polls will be on Canvas. This poll I did right now for the recording um, uh, early on when we, when we started the class and everyone has voted um, um, yes, they acknowledge that this will be recorded. So, but all future polling, Canvas, qu things, quizzes, et cetera, will be on Canvas, okay? I like Jeremy's idea. I appreciate a way for students to connect. Um, I'll, I'll, think, uh, I'll think about that. If you have suggestions, please let me know. Um, but I'll think of, uh, I'll, I'll reach out, see what others are doing about this. If someone wants to make a group name on or Discord, they can post the links in the discussion tabs on Canvas. Um, unfortunately, the Wizards and Dragons was a real topic in a different class. We also hit zombies and vampires. <laughs> Okay, well, uh, maybe, uh, yeah, I, I can't say. Um, it might have been a funny discussion, but I, it looks like it did distract you. So um, we'll make sure to stay on topic. Um, uh, okay, so Hayden says, having clear feedback on assignments to help identify problem areas and provide more opportunity to review for exams, okay? Um, posting short lecture videos throughout the week to go over different principles, give it better. Yeah, so, so again, Zach, that resonates with the um, flipped classroom. Um, uh, you know, uh, it, it is hard to do this year um, for this class. And in my experience at, at, um, 
at, especially in this class, the lecture format has been more effective. We might, now what you might want to do is go back and listen to my lectures um, from previous years. They're long lectures because of the active learning that I do in class where we talk about something and then I ask you to split into groups. We're gonna figure out how to do that. Maybe do breakout rooms, you go to a discussion, you typically have a group name and then you know you come back. I'll talk about this late next lecture. And we have like a randomized group selection and pick a group, we have a discussion. Um, um, so, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's different than the flipped classroom. The flipped classroom is gonna rely on you looking, listening into the videos and if you have a hundred videos to listen through, um, you know, many will not be able to listen through. So feel free to go back to my previous videos from last year and use that, you know, split each lecture into, you know, do some in the morning, do some in the afternoon. So that would give you this feel, hopefully, of the flipped classroom. Convenience of recorded lectures and learning materials. Um, so, yeah, I think we've got that covered. All the slides will be posted, PDF, and everything's going to be through Canvas with recordings, okay? Right, sorry, that was right before you did explain the first time. Sounds good. Okay, so it's back. All right, any other comments? Um, okay, so what I personally uh, uh, hate the most is that uh, uh, listening into a monotone um, speaker with no like active engagement that brings me back. Typically, what happens if you plot on the y axis, if you plot attention versus time. Uh, excuse me, typically what happens early on, students have attention, a lot of attention, then goes up, goes up, and then it peaks, and then it just goes down, okay? So that's the first 15 minutes, okay? That's why 15, 10, 15 minutes is like best um, for attention, but then your attention breaks down. So what I will try to do is almost every 10, 15 minutes when we feel things are monotone, we, we break the pattern. We do an activity, we do something else, Okay, just to try to get you engaged again. Um, clearly, this is harder done on Zoom than it is in, in real life, um, in person, where we actually physically congregate into groups, gets really loud, people talking and laughing and chit-chatting, etc. cetera. Um, so we'll have to work together um, uh, with this on Zoom. I'm going to try to break you into groups. We'll see how that works. Um, the breakout room feature in Zoom is not very nice because there's like a one minute um, lead time and one minute exit time. So that kind of takes, ends up taking a lot of time from the lecture. Um, typically I like to keep the activities one to three minutes long. Alternatively, we'll do them individually, but you, you know, give you time, you go work on something and then I'll randomly um, um, select someone uh, unless they say, I don't want to be called upon uh, beforehand. So we'll talk about this next time. Okay, so um, I have about um, uh, 20 seconds left. Um, I wanted to talk about programming. I'll do this. How about I do this um, on Thursday? Um, we'll talk about programming Python. Uh, please do sign up for a Python. If you don't have Python and Jupyter Notebooks locally on your computer, um, please do sign up um, on, uh, on the CHPC account I gave you. Um, I listed that on the Canvas page and in the syllabus. Go ahead and sign up for an account and then you'll be able to log into something called on demand at .chpc.uta.edu. And I'll discuss that with you next time. If you have Python locally and Jupyter Notebook running locally, you don't have to do anything, okay? Now, before I let you go, I want you to um, take a minute and um, uh, uh, Tell me what you tell me if you think you're gonna have fun in this class or not, just based on this, you know, one hour, 20 minutes of me just blabbing in your face. All right. And if something you needed clarification on something specific. Jake thinks, um, says, I hope. Okay. It is going to be fun. I know how, huh, Sovit. <laughs> Thank you, Sovit. I think it's going to be fun. Thank you, Jennifer. Um, sounds going to be fun. I'm excited. Also, this class is reputation. <laughs> okay. Um, the challenge will be a good class. I like analytical progress. I think I will have fun. Sure, simulation is like very useful skill. So we won't be doing simulation, um, Carl, but this is a precursor to simulation. 
Okay, most engaging class. I'm pretty confident. Thank you, Hayden. I appreciate the feedback. Be challenging, um, but will provide a lot of background. I'm excited for it, but a little scared for coding 1703 fast to teach coding. Yeah, so coding is always a problem. We'll talk a little bit about this, um, Jennifer, next time. And, um, uh, you know, we'll, we're going to build our programming arsenal. There are going to be things that sometimes what will happen is like when you learn swimming, you just throw someone in the water and let them learn how to float, right? So I might present you just like a bunch of code. And you're going to be like, whoa, what's going on? You'll get to learn it and then it'll be history, okay? Um, so we'll, we'll, we're going to have to work through this together. Um, and, and I've tried to keep the programming limited. Okay, to things that you know you created. I give you the formula to do something like an iterative solver, but you have to use it to solve a few problems. So you have to figure out how to plug that in. Okay, so so from that perspective, it's not that complicated. I think that'll be a pretty good class. Thank you. I'm excited. It'll be super fun. I'm excited. I think it'll be fun. Sounds fun. I'm terrified and excited. <laughs> Thanks for the uh, honesty, Sydney. Um, I think so. Look forward to getting some uh, to know some of my classmates. Yes, that'd be great if you if you all get to know, start. You know, go on Piazza. I don't actually know how to use Piazza, so you probably know better than me. Just go and start using it and talk to each other and uh, you know um, um, start forming groups and whatnot. Uh, that would be a lot of work, but rewarding. Um, thanks, Jill. Um, excited, but a little nervous from Megan. I wish I can um, see all of you. So um, I encourage you, you're not required to turn on your cameras, okay? But I encourage you to, because I'd like to see you. I'd like to know you. Um, and, and, and because I'm gonna be your teacher for life. You can say, oh, I took numerical methods with Dr. Saad, you know, and we might bump into each other in the future. Like, hey, I took numerical methods with you. That's the best thing that could happen in life, okay? Um, Seems super cool, seems like a very challenging but useful class. Yeah, it is useful. James, I'm a little worried, but looking forward to the class. Thank you, James. All right, well, thank you everyone. Um, I look forward to seeing you again on Thursday and we'll start getting our hands um, immersed in numerical methods. Um, thank you so much and please do reach out um, for any concerns and comments. Um, you have a wonderful day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Thanks Thank Professor. You. Thank you. Professor. Oh, okay. Can I ask a quick clarification on exams? Yes, Sarah. Hi. Okay. Awesome. Hi. By the way, excited for this class. I think it'll be very useful now that we're Thank talking. You. It's more application, less programming. Definitely feel a little bit better about that. <laughs> um, so, on both the handwritten and online exams, it sounds like it's more of. Um, applying what we've learned versus like writing a snippet of code. If I'm- Yeah, so yeah, that's a great question. There's not gonna be no coding on exams. Coding okay. is only on homework, okay? okay? So exams will test your um, understanding of the material. Like you might get, for example, you know, calculate the area under this curve or, you know, things, okay. things more, fun, more fun than that, but no programming questions on exams. Programming only for homework. Okay. okay, fantastic. That's totally fair. Thank because you. this class is not about programming, right? It's <laughs> yes. about numerical method. So, yeah. Okay. Great. Awesome. Thank you for thank you for that bringing that up. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Have a great day. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you. Likewise. Uh, hello, Professor. I just have hi, Ann. How are you? Uh, I'm I'm good. I just have a quick question about programming. I just have uh -huh. a question about programming. Yeah. Because I took uh, I took statistics for engineer like last semester, and I With was Professor Silcox. Yes, I was wondering mm -hmm. if the if the coding would be at the same level or above because I'm. I do not level. know um, the level of coding in um, Professor Silcox's class. But I think it'll be similar in spirit. Tim and I have the same philosophy about um, what students should be doing in our classes, the level of programming. Okay. Um, so I think it will be similar, but in many ways it'll be easier because we're not gonna be using complex libraries like pandas and data frames, et cetera. Oh, okay. Both things are gonna be using like NumPy and just plotting, which you would have covered um, in class. 
Um, okay. In certain cases, like with when we do linear solvers, um, there's gonna be writing the code for the linear solver is is takes time and effort. So what I do, I'll give you the code with a gap, with a couple of gaps in it, okay? And then you fill in the gaps, but then you have to use that code to use it to solve an, a couple of actual problems, okay? So that okay. code would be like a function call. You call the algorithm that solves the system of equations, right? Okay. And then, but then you have to know how to apply it. So the coding will be limited to essentially, okay, I'm gonna, I need to solve this problem for these, these temperatures, okay? So you write a for loop for all of the temperatures in this list of temperatures, solve the problem again and again and again. Okay, that's that's the level um, you'd be dealing with. Okay. Okay, and I just have a quick question because I was mm -hmm. away when you answer when you look over my like my comments. I, uh -huh. uh, like so, will all your assignments be listed on Canvas? Like, if I go to like uh, the calendar, can I see everything? Because I have uh, not with, not uh, beforehand, the assignments will not be posted ahead of time. The assignments okay. will, but they will be listed on Canvas, but not all of them ahead of time because. The assignments are going to depend on what we covered the week before. Oh, okay. Sometimes, you know, there's delay. So I have to adjust some of the questions, if that makes sense. So okay. I post the homework on the day it is, um, um, it, it is, it is assigned. Okay. 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 Thank yeah. you very much. Thank of course. You very much. Of course. I have to go now. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. All right.